have I always had a sense that I would be famous? I have always had that sense. Hello, fifth line profile. This is for you if you are a 5'1", a 5'2", a 2'5", or a 3'5". And this is the second video in my profile playlist about the fifth line. So if you haven't watched the first one yet about what is a heretic, go watch that one first and then come back and watch this video. In this video, we're talking about the projection field. So, oh, before I do that, I'm Karen McMullen. Welcome to my channel. I work with multidimensional, energetically aware leaders to help them get really clear about who they are, what they're here for, and how to bring the full expression of their essence into the world. Some of the traits of, of the heretic are that they are really here for the masses. They're here to universalize a perspective that is meant to be spread wide to the public. Um, so they can, you know, be famous, um, they can be in power, they're leaders, they're perfect for this day and age of the internet because now that we have the internet, you can actually get your truth out into the world in a widespread way. One of the properties of the fifth line is that they have this alluring kind of mystique and um, attraction, almost seductive energy field. So people will be drawn to the fifth line and for good reason, because the fifth line is here to universalize a message. So in order to make something universal, um, there has to be an attractor factor. And part of that is a, pro is a projection field around them where people will see the fifth line and rather than actually see the, the, like the real human, they will see what they can get from the human. <laughs> like they see the solution that you have for them. Now, there's a few consequences of this. One of them is that it can make a fifth line paranoid because the, they, they have this natural sense like people are gonna want something for me. Like, and the image used to portray the fifth line is like they're on the second floor of their house like peeping out <laughs> of the blinds, um, not really wanting to be that visible because they know if they are visible, people are going to project onto them. So there's this fear of visibility. I've seen this unfortunately with quite a few of my fifth line friends where they never really step into their, their leadership role um, because they fear this aspect of projection. So rather than fear it and limit your visibility out of fear, um, how about we become masterful with the projection field so that you can totally embody your leadership? I did a really fun interview with Namaste Moore about how to be a projection ninja. Um, so you can check that video out there if you like. Because one of the benefits of having a projection field is basically like people are going to think you're amazing. They will, you know, they will also maybe um, burn you at the stake. <laughs> um, that's one of the keynote kind of words that goes along with the fifth line is if you can't deliver the solution that people think that you're here to give them, then they will burn you at the stake. And so that's that's really the fear, but there is a way to limit the amount of experiences of being burned at the stake that you have. And that is to follow your strategy and authority. In other words, listening to your inner truth about what situations to be involved with. So let's hear from some fifth lines about their experience with the projection field. Living in a projection field where people are constantly have expectations of how I'm going to provide a solution for them can be a little bit confusing because it can come out of left field. Sometimes it's really well structured that people are like, oh, OK, this is this person for whatever reason we've decided to go along with um, him finding a solution for this. But sometimes they don't really want me to find a solution, but they include me. 
And then they're a little bit disappointed that I'm the one that comes up with the solution. It seems odd. <laughs> I know I'm in the right place, but the people are like telling me that what I'm doing is wrong. And it's like, well, why did you ask for my help? <laughs> people look at me because I am a leader, um, because I am unique and different, and they want answers from me. And often they look at me as being perfect and sometimes they put me on a pedestal and I can tell you right now, I don't need to be on anybody's pedestal because I'm human just like everyone else. But they look to me for solutions. And as long as things are good and in harmony, they're fine with me. But the minute I mirror back to them something they don't want to look at themselves, something that is a shadow, then they run. So it's not always fun to be a heretic. And I've become very, very conscious that I like to keep my, my energy close to me because I can get drawn into other people's issues, other people calling me for advice, when I don't really have the energy or maybe even the expertise to help them with those issues, problems that they're looking to me for to help them solve. And I've become very aware of what the spoken or unspoken expectations are on me when I do interact with people. I uh, don't enjoy it as much, I guess, when it's out of obligation. I, I definitely don't enjoy it when it's out of obligation. That is the projection field. I feel like a lot of times I live in a hall of mirrors where I can't really fully see what I'm universalizing, what I'm sharing, where I can be the savior and uh, where I cannot. It gets very confusing to me at times, which is why strategy and authority for me has, has saved me a lot <laughs> in the last years of, of deconditioning because I understand now that, that a lot of times I don't know and I don't need to know unless I'm invited out into something and then uh, with my authority, I'll know. Another keynote for the heretic or the fifth line is to be a stranger of consequence, an important stranger that comes into your life that you'll never forget. Um, however, for the fifth line, it's just your every single day. So you are the stranger of consequence for others, but for yourself, you're just being you. An example of this would be, you'll see Rory in this interview series, he's a ski patroller and he, you know, every single day patrolling around, he, he would help, I don't know how many people in situations. Um, so for them, he would be an important person that like helped them with a, a life moment where that they'll never forget where they injured themselves on the ski hill on their vacation. Um, but for him, they're just one of dozens and dozens and dozens of people every single year that, that he is a savior for. One of the consequences of being a stranger of consequence is that fives uh, tend to not have that many close friends. They typically have just a handful of people who are really able to see them for who they are and not for the projection field of what they think <laughs> the five is. I am not paranoid, but I am selective. And by that, I mean that at this point in my own personal journey, because I know there is a tendency for others to project upon me what they desire to see and what they need from me, uh, I do keep myself as that stranger of consequence. I don't look at everyone as being my friend um, or take them into my confidence in that way or just presume that we're going to have like this kumbaya moment. Uh, another way of saying that would be that I understand that usually when I'm in someone's life, I'm in their life for a reason and a season, not necessarily just to chill or just to you know let's just be buddies 
it's very rare. I do have friends, you know, <laughs> but um, but I don't I don't tend to say I'm going to take everyone into being my friend, even though most people think that I am their friend. Um, and I and I found that to be true with other fives as well. Everyone thinks that you're their friend, but you know those people who you really see as you can get me. And that friendship usually takes the form of that other person doesn't want anything. Oh, have I always had a sense that I would be famous? I have always had that sense. So it kind of helps that my mother got me in acting and modeling when I was three because everyone told her I look like the Gerber baby. And so I'm kind of dating myself, but um, she, she, so she got me into that industry very young. And I can remember being about six and having maybe a little bit older and having a recurrent nightmare that everyone knew my name. And I went and I hid in a sewer because everyone knew my name. And I grew up in New York. So um, so I went and hid in a sewer and I was looking um, out of the sewer, kind of like that little creature from that book, It. <laughs> I was looking out of, the, out of the sewer and trying to keep people from seeing me because everyone knew my name and it was so scary for me. And, uh, and it took a long time for me to come to grips with that uh, desire to hide, to not be known for fear of what people would do to me. And I think some of that was, you know, past life stuff and things of that nature. But when, when I recognized that I do have a heretical nature and that I'm going to do that no matter where I am, then things started clicking. I really started understanding why that concern about being famous, about being known was there. And that at the same time, the willingness to go anyway, to go anyway, you know, and that made a big, huge difference. So yes, I, I have always thought that I would be famous in some way, form or fashion. I just didn't know how. I absolutely love this story about her being, having this recurring nightmare of being in a sewer and like peering out. I just think that is so epitomizing of the fear of the fifth line of the projection field and this fear of being burned at the stake. And so I also love to hear how she overcame that and really just stepped into leadership, stepped into visibility um, and owned the projection field. It's so frigging awesome. So that's what we need. We really need you, fifth line. We need you to lead. We need you to share your truth. We need, we need you. We need what you have to universalize. So don't hold back. That's conditioning. Uh, learn to master this aspect of your design and just go with it. May I invite you to join me for a reading. If you are a leader who's energetically aware and you have a business, I work best with entrepreneurs. So I offer an energetic architecture clarity session. If that sounds interesting to you, you can check out the link below. In our next video, we're gonna go more into this projection field and how to protect yourself um, using strategy and authority. So check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.